Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes presents The Big Story. Hey, Bud. Yeah? Got a match? Sure. Here you are. Thanks. Here your match is back. Much obliged. Don't mention it. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the Secret Service. The Big Story. Another in a thrilling series based on true experiences of newspaper reporters. Tonight, to Jack Adams of the Los Angeles Examiner, goes the Pell Mell Award for The Big Story. that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The cigarette and the distinguished red package, Pell Mell. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell Mell? There's a reason. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell Mell's greater length filters the smoke naturally through the much greater distance of Pell Mell's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos, giving you a smoother, mellower, more satisfying smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now the exciting and authentic story of the case of the counterfeit coins. You are Jack Adams of the Los Angeles Examiner. For weeks you've been running down leads on a big counterfeiting ring in town. And for weeks, you've always come back to the same place. Nowhere. And at the moment, thousands of phony half-dollar coins are floating around in L.A., and nobody knows where the phony money mill is or who's behind it. Then, one afternoon, one of the copy boys opens your office door. Say, Mr. Adams. Yeah, kid, what is it? A guy outside wants to see you. What about? He claims he's got a big story on the counterfeiting ring. What? Another one? Yeah, another one. Only, I've never seen a character like this in all my life. What do you mean, Eddie? Well, I cased him for an ex-con. And then I said to myself, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just a refugee from a flop house. He looks like a scarecrow wearing a suit made out of burlap. Could be some tramp after a handout. Does he look hungry? Yeah, but not for vitamins. More for a cork or a needle, if you ask me. Mm. Shall I send him in or throw him out? You're a pretty cynical kid, Eddie. And you'll probably turn out to be a great reporter. But just to prove that the milk of human kindness doesn't always turn sour, send the gentleman in. Okay. Okay, you go ahead in. Uh, Thanks. Thanks a lot, kid. Uh, Are you Jack Adams, are you? Yeah, I'm Adams. Who are you? My name's Snuffy. It's Snuffy. I heard you the first time. Snuffy what? Just Snuffy. Okay, just Snuffy. Now, what's on your mind? Uh... I uh, seen by the papers you've been writing a lot of stories on the phony dough racket you've been writing, and I says to myself, I says, maybe you'd be interested. Interested in what? A little info. Inside stuff, if you know what I mean. The McCoy on a phony four-bit slugs that are floating around town. So I tells myself I'll make the approach and see what I can say, see? Vaguely. So? So if I, uh, if I lead you to the info, uh, do I get a payoff? If your information is legitimate, yes. Okay, you look copacetic to me. You look, I'll take a chance. I knew one of us was taking the chance. Well, what's your proposition, Snuffy? I can get you on the inside with a counterfeit mob. What? You heard me, bub. I know every agent in a racket. How come? I've got connections. You want the story or don't you? If you could really get me on the inside... I said I would, didn't I, bub? And I'm going to prove it. Now, meet me here at the examiner tomorrow night at nine bells. I'm dressed in the oldest studs you can find, and don't shave. So long. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't say I would... 
Are you going, Mr. Adams? Eddie, what the... I was listening outside the door. Uh, Are you going? Look, Eddie, it's only in the movies that reporters listen to keyholes. Are you going to keep that day with Snuffy tomorrow night? I don't know. If you don't keep it, can I? No. Why not? Because it's too dangerous. A good reporter isn't afraid of danger. Everybody's afright of danger. Then what are you going to do about tomorrow night? I don't know. Before I decide anything, I think I'll run over and have a little chat with George Miller at the Secret Service office. Well, George, what do you think? Should I keep this date with this snuffy character or shouldn't I? Jack, don't don't ask me to answer a question like that. What do you mean? Well, you'll be taking a chance if you go through with it. This counterfeiting ring is dangerous, Jack. Crooks who are running it wouldn't hesitate to kill if they thought their racket was threatened. I see. That's the way it is, huh? Yeah, that's the way it is. Well? George, you know me. I'm no hero. Who is? But I feel a big story coming on. And in that case... In that case, you'll take the chance. Yes. All right, Jack. Go ahead and meet your unsanitary little friend. But don't say I didn't warn you. Hiya, pal, I'm here. Hello, Snuffy. How do I look? Well, you look okay, pal, but uh, can you talk, can you? I don't get you. Well, old duds ain't enough. You gotta make with the lingo, see, like I do. Get me, otherwise they'll take you for a phony, they'll take you. Oh, thanks, Snuffy. Not thanks like you say it, pal. Thanks. See? Lay off the English accent. Speak American. See what I mean? Okay, Bob. Let's scram. Is that better? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Uh, did you bring any dough with you, did you? A hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. Yeah. It ain't much, but it'll have to do. What's the angle? Got a case? Perfect. I got a case. You're a buyer. A buyer? Sure. You got the real letters. The kind Uncle Sammy puts out. And with it, you buy the phony four-bit pieces. Five half dollars for a legit buck. See what I mean? Five halves for one. That's the deal. Copacetic. I see what you mean. Okay. Then let's beat it and contact some of my pals. Let's contact. Sure, but before we go, one question, Snuffy. Yeah, what? You're going to double-cross your pals, right? You got the answer. I don't owe them nothing, not a thing. So what? So how do I know you won't double-cross me? Double-cross you? How can you say a thing like that, pal? What kind of a stool pigeon do you take me for? Now, come on, I got some pals waiting for me in a bar. <laughs> Hiya, baby. Don't baby me, you ratty squirt. Uh, Who's your pal? The name's Jack, the name is. He's the right guy. Pal, this is Baby. Pleased to meet you, Baby. Same to you, handsome. But ain't sure Knuckles is going to be so happy about this, Snuffy. We were supposed to meet you here alone. Take it easy, Baby. This guy's a right G. Now, He uh... better be right, Dream Boy, because here comes Knuckles now. Oh. Uh, hiya, Knuckles. Hi. Uh, Knuckles? Who's the guy? Uh, the name's Jack. Jack, eh? That's right. He's a friend of Snuffy. Shut up. Snuffy, you lame brain dope. I ought to beat your brains in. Oh, now, listen, Knuckles, I What'd didn't... What'd you do... bring him here, stupid? Come on, make us some talk. Oh, now, listen, Knuckles, Jack, here's the right guy. He's an old pal of mine. See what I mean? Pal of yours, huh? Not a bad-looking one, huh, Knuckles? Baby, shut your fat mouth. Snuffy, where'd you meet this mug? Oh, now, gee, Knuckles, don't go off your rocker. He used to shell for me when I was running that carnival game in San Diego. No kidding. Well, what's your racket now, honey? Uh, he's a buyer. That's right. I might be interested in a little merchandise. No kidding. Knuckles, why don't you take handsome Baby, to... why don't you shut up? Who said we had anything to sell, mister? You haven't? Say so. I got other contacts. You stay here, bub. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, boss. This batch of half dollars is no good. Huh? Discard them. Yeah, but boss... I, I said discard them. Okay. I don't make any merchandise unless it's perfect. Understand? Next time, watch your alloys. And be careful of those molds. 
If there's anything I won't stand for, it's inefficiency. Yes? Boss, this is Knuckles. Well? Snuffy just brought in a guy from the outside. Snuffy did? Yeah. Knuckles, I don't like that. Snuffy claims he's a buyer. Knuckles, I don't regard Snuffy as the soul of honor. His friend could be a cop. Well, gee, boss, I don't think so. Snuffy claims he's a buyer. You said that. Do you think he's a buyer, Knuckles? Oh, I don't know. He could be. Big? No way of telling, boss. Well, I'm not interested in small fry. Check him and keep your eyes open. Okay. Play along with him for a little while. See what you can find out. I'll have a look at him later. Hiya, Knuckles. Back so soon? Yeah, I'm back. Gee, that's too bad. I was just having a very interesting chat with Handsome here. I'll do the chatting, maybe. For Knuckles, I just... You heard me. What do you want to talk about, Knuckles? You. That's just what we were talking about. Baby. I'm sorry. We like to find out a few things about our uh, customers. Where are you from, Jack? Well, I was born in a small town just six Never miles Never mind off. the obituary. Where do you operate? All over. Like where all over? Oh, Chicago, New York, Detroit. Detroit, eh? Sure, why not? You know a guy from Detroit called Joe Stavisky? <laughs> Joe Stavisky? Yeah, I think so. What do you mean, you think so? Isn't he the guy they call Speckles? No. Oh. Detroit, eh? Yeah, Detroit. Funny you never heard of Joe Stavisky. Everybody that ever worked Detroit knows Joe. Not me. So I see. Ah, uh, lay off the guy, Knuckles. He's a level ass baby. I warned you, keep out of this, Blue Eyes. You see, I always work solo. That's why I never knew too many of the mob. Safer that way. No one to squeal on me. Didn't have to worry about no stoolie, eh? That's right. Hmm, that's a good idea. How about that, Snuffy? Don't you think that's a good idea? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea, that is sure. Never have to worry if some little squirt's gonna turn stool pigeon on you. Uh, stupid. Ah, uh, how about another beer, huh? Knuckles? Uh, another beer, huh? Shut up. Yeah, you got a good idea there, Jack. Now he's a slick one, this Jack fella. Full of ideas, ain't you, honey? Baby, will you dry up? Now, wait a minute, Knuckles. You ain't the only Shut one. Shut up, I said. Come on, we're getting out of here. Oh, Knuckles, I didn't... Come on. See you later, Jack. And Snuffy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll be keeping an eye on you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Goodbye, Knuckles. Goodbye. Snuffy, who is this Knuckles? What's he in this counterfeiting gang? Not so loud, Jack. Not so loud. You want to put us both in a couple of wooden boxes, you want to? I'm sorry. Uh, for your info, pal, and strictly from the horse's mouth, Knuckles is the boss's strong arm man. And who's the boss? I don't know. What do you mean? I never seen him. The boss is a big operator. Once you get by Knuckles, once you get by, maybe you'll meet him. Yeah, but come on, Jack. It's getting late. I want to. Hey. Get... Wait a minute. Huh? That guy over there, sitting alone at that corner table. You know him? Uh. Oh, the guy with his hat pulled over his eyes. Yeah. Never seen him before. I have. He followed us here. Why? He was in a car that followed us here from the examiner. Now, pal, you're getting the jitters, you're getting. Nobody's following us. Are they? That guy is. Well, let's get out of here. Well, where we go? I'll get some shut-eye at my hotel. Your hotel? Yeah, that's right, pal. I got a suite at the Supreme. Mike says to take cuts 30 and 31. So this is the suite you were talking about, huh, Snuffy? Yeah, sure, sure. Semi-private, like. Semi-private? I like to see what you call public. Dirt, vermin, and a smell you could cut with a knife. Yeah, the price recommends it. Look, Snuffy, do we have to stay here? 
Why don't we go back to my place and sneak a bath, get cleaned up, and then go back to meet Knuckles in the morning, huh? But you wanted to commit suicide. You said there was a mug tail in you, didn't you? Yes, well, I'll but... tell you to your high-class places, too, you know. And then what? The whole game goes up. You gotta play a throw, chum. Play a throw. Okay, Snuffy. But this ain't play. Oh, here's the cuts. Uh, well, good night, Jack. Good night, Snuffy. Pleasant dreams. Yeah, pleasant dreams. You lie there, watching, listening. And finally you see the first streaks of dawn come trickling through the high, narrow windows. Then... You see a man get up from a far bed and walk towards you. You strain your eyes in the dim light. And you see that this is the mug who's been trailing you. He comes closer. You wait, your whole body prickling with goose flesh. Who are you? Shh. What do you want? Quiet. You want to wake up the whole joint? What do you want? You. Now, look. Your name, Adams? No, wait a minute. Take right. it easy. I'm Secret Service. George Miller assigned me to tell you. I've watched you follow me in the ever dive. I thought you were after me with a gun, for sure. Sorry, you were never alone. I couldn't tip you off. Even now, I wasn't sure it was you in this light. Learn anything yet, Adams? Well, I... We'll be back in just a minute with tonight's big story. But first, a word from Cy Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to pell-mell? Four notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell-mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, pell-mells are good, 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 and good. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pell-Mell's greater length filters the smoke naturally through the much greater distance of Pell-Mell's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos, giving you a smoother, mellower, more satisfying smoke. Four notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now we return you to our narrator, Barry Kroger, and tonight's big story. You, Jack Adams, of the Los Angeles Examiner, have been talking in whispers with a Secret Service agent... When the early morning silence of the flop house is suddenly shattered by... What was that? Contact you later, Adam. Jack. Hey, Jack, where are you? Where are you? Right beside you, Snuffy. What oh, happened? I don't like it, I tell you. I don't like it no how. A guy by the name of Red Davis was just knifed. Knife? And how? I don't like this, Jack. Was he a friend of yours? Listen, no guy's a friend of mine that goes around getting himself knifed and pulling in the cops so they can ask embarrassing questions. Now, come on, we're getting out of here, but fast. Yeah, but where do we go? We'll go up and see Knuckles. <laughs> Come on, Knuckles, open up. Who's that? Me, Snuffy, and Jack. Wait a minute. Uh, listen, you little squirt. What you doing barging in here this time in the morning? Now, look, Knuckles. Ain't your suite of rooms at the flop house good enough? Now, look, Knuckles, it ain't funny. It ain't a guy just got knifed over there. It ain't safe, I tell you. Afraid of getting yours, Snuffy? I don't like being where they start asking questions where they start asking. Well, you walked in the same setup here, Snuffy. Got a few questions more I want to ask your friend Jack. Shoot. You said you were a buyer. That right, Jack? That's right. Yeah, like I told you, Knuckles. Wipe down your runt. I'll do all the talking. Okay, Knuckles, okay. I, I didn't mean nothing. I didn't mean... Getting back to the point, Jack. How much merchandise do you want to buy? That depends on the price. What's the market? Five halves for a buck. Not so good. Take it or leave it. All right. I'm in. For how much? A hundred bucks now. Chicken feet. And 
A lot more later. If. If what, pal? If your merchandise is good. You don't think it's good? I always like to be shown. Okay. Got a few samples with me. Take these four-bit pieces we make and try them out yourself. What'll it be, mister? Give me an examiner. Here you are. Change a half? Sure. Always check these half-dollar pieces now. There's a lot of phony stuff floating around. This one's to McCoy, all right. Here's your change, mister. What'll it be, mister? Cup of coffee. One java coming up. Here you are. Where'd you get this half dollar, mister? Well, I... I I don't know. What's wrong with it? Nothing. Looks good to me. I ain't been stuck with a bad one yet. What do you have, bud? A beer. Draw one. Here you are, bartender. Oh, another one of these things, huh? Well, you mean this half dollar is phony? Oh, no, no, it's okay. Anybody with a good eye can see that. Besides, this is dated 1937. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, I was tipped off that all the phony four-bit pieces were dated 1934 and 1936. Who told you that? The guy who claimed he was in the know. A guy named Snuffy. <laughs> Jack, you satisfied? I'm satisfied. It's good merchandise. Let's talk business. How much business, pal? Big business. Okay, Jack. Let's step into this here restaurant. Why? I want to make me a telephone call. Let's see that new steel die, Joe. Yeah, here it is, boss. Hmm. Not bad. That's good artwork. Very good indeed. Yeah, and you know, with a good power press, boss, we can turn out about 50 grand in four-bit pieces. Oh, I think Never I mind, better... Joe. I'll take it. Hello? Boss, this is Knuckles. Yes? This new buyer Snuffy found is talking big. Hmm. You think he's legitimate, Knuckles? As far as I can make out, he's level. Hmm. We could use a good customer. Y'all are bringing him up, boss? All right. I'll look him over. And incidentally, Knuckles... Yeah? When you bring him up, stick around. I may find that I don't like his face. You, Jack Adams, were listening when Knuckles dialed the number. And now you get the number down fast on a clip of matches you're carrying. You're sure the boss himself is at that number. But you haven't got a chance to get it to Secret Service. And then you see a man walk in. The agent that George Miller assigned to tell you. And you get a fast and desperate idea. All right, Jack. Let's go. Go where? I'll tip you off when we get there. Come on. Okay. Uh, Hold it, Knuckles. I need a light. Hey, Bud... Yeah? Got a match? Sure. Here you are. Thanks. Here are your matches back. Watch your boy. Don't mention it. Come on, Jack. Quit stalling around. Now, let's go. Hey, Knuckles. I got a friend with me. All right. Come in, won't you? So, you're a friend of Snuffy's, are you? That's right. And you're a buyer. I'm a buyer. You don't look the part. Don't let my clothes fool you. Incidentally, this is a nice layout you got around here. It's adequate. I hope to expand soon. How much of my merchandise would you like to buy? 5000 to begin with. More later. You have the money with you? No, not with me, but 
I'll bring the cash tomorrow. Well, that would be all right if I were sure you were legitimate. But you know I'm a pal of Snuffy's. Snuffy is very unreliable. How else can I prove that I'm unreliable? You might like to show me the press card you've got in your wallet. Huh? Knuckles, I'd like you to meet Jack Adams, a reporter of the Los Angeles Examiner. I... I, I think there must be some mistake. I... I... There is a mistake, Mr. Adams. And you made it. You should have known that I make it a point to recognize people who write unpleasant things about my, uh, my business venture. Now, let's not waste time with useless lies. You are Jack Adams, aren't you? Yes. Thank you for not shilly-shallying. I'll try to make this as painless as possible. I dislike killing people. You're not going to kill anyone. Really? Why not? Because an agent of the Secret Service is going to be here any minute now. That's unlikely. That's positive. When Knuckles dialed your phone number a few minutes ago, I took it down on a book of matches and passed it to the Secret Service man who has been covering me since yesterday. Knuckles, you fool, you've been tricked. He's lying, boss. He's lying. Shut up. Honest, boss. I didn't see anyone. Open the door. Open the door. This is the Secret Service. Boss, I ought to drill him for this. No. Open the door or we'll break it down. Boss, please let me drill him. He got us into this. Don't be a fool, Knuckles. It's a little late for that now. Open the door. In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Jack Adams of the Los Angeles Examiner with the final outcome of tonight's big story. Mel Famous Cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good, 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 and good. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now we read you that telegram from Jack Adams of the Los Angeles Examiner. Leaders in counterfeiting ring were brought to trial, found guilty, and sentenced to federal penitentiary. All their equipment was confiscated... And the circulation of counterfeit coins has ended. Many thanks for tonight's Pell Mell Award. Thank you, Mr. Adams. The makers of Pell Mell famous cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell Mell famous cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the pages of the Nashville Tennessean. Byline Jack Setters. A big story that reached its climax when a newspaper published in Tennessee helped capture a murderer in Ohio. A big story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor. Directed by Harry Ingram, with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Max Ehrlich. Your narrator was Barry Kroger, and Dwight Wiest played the part of Jack Adams. All names in tonight's story, except that of Mr. Adams, were fictitious. But the dramatization was based on a true and authentic case. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm.